like yeah. the grocery stores are there is a shortage in grocery stores like, there is there's much- lack of produce that you're having i know like i'm not even talking about like toilet paper like how everyone was running on toilet paper there is a shortage of food there is a shortage of supplies do you think it's worse than when it was at 2020 at the at the height of covid absolutely Hello and welcome back to the Onyx Family Podcast where we talk about issues that families care about. Today we're going to be talking about Made on Netflix and how that was really triggering for at least me and probably the family because we've gone through a lot of those things and we're going to talk about what's happening right now with all the supply shortages, worker shortages and then we're going to end off with how do you prepare for what could be coming. Okay so guys who here watched Made? I know Shiloh didn't, but who here did? I watched Made. Love I did too. Made. Wait, did you finish it? I finished it. Oh man, I still have like three or more episodes or four more episodes. Really? Yeah. You need to just binge it. Oh, I would love if I had three or four more episodes. I loved that show. I was just, we were just hooked. Yeah, we were hooked. We yeah. definitely binged that. I feel yeah. like a lot of people were hooked because it was so realistic. Oh yeah, absolutely. So since I didn't watch it, can you guys explain to me what Made is? Sure. Made is a series on Netflix and it follows a a girl and her mother, but mostly a young lady who has a a child who's about, what, two years old? Yeah, about two. two years old. And the financial struggles that she goes through once she breaks up with uh, the father of the child. And so she goes from um, homeless. Well, she goes to a domestic violence shelter and then she's transferred from there to like this temporary housing to a more permanent place. But the ups and the downs and especially the red tape with the government and right. trying to get benefits and how twisted the benefits are like where like I remember seeing a part where she had to get something like she had to get a job but she had to have a job to prove she had a job she had right. to get a job to get a job oh yeah that was weird yeah. like how do you get a job to get a job right right, right. <laughs> the acting was phenomenal I do like her acting oh, and I love the editing the mother of it too. the mother Andy McDowell. She was just like, she needs an Oscar. Isn't she the woman from um, Groundhog Day? I looked it up. That, yeah, it is her. Yeah, it is her. Groundhog Day. Yeah, it is her. And on Made, the mother and daughter are literally mother and daughter in real life. In real life. Their Wait, chemistry are you was serious? unmatched. Yes. Yeah, that's why they had good chemistry. Oh, snap. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was really good. But I want to go so back. So what was it? Was it a show about poverty? Do you think that that was one of the main reasons why they even did the show? Because, you know, every show has sort of like an agenda. An underlying think, story, like right, moral. An underlying story. Do you think that showing poverty and the difficulty I think it, in America? For me, it had a lot of themes. A lot of themes. One is how do you gain your independence after a, breaking up and with a, As a female, you know, yeah. And I think another one was, yeah, how do you navigate the system that is very confusing? I thought it was going to be about all about what was it called again? Trying to get a child back. That's it. I literally when it ended oh. in episode two, I was like, wait, that's it. What's the rest of the season? Right. Well, I thought the whole thing just from the title was just about her being a maid. She's hardly cleaning. Like she's like, like what I mean is like they don't show that many <laughs> scenes true. of her cleaning. It's true. But I think that they wanted to show a blue collar worker from a a female perspective and how they hustle to make it work for their family. Right. Yes. I for me, I actually really like reading books about these types of topics. I remember years ago I read Nickel and Dimed. The author that wrote that, Barbara, I think Einrich, I have to look at her last name, but um, she's written a couple of other books that I'm currently reading right now. And it's always about people who are overlooked in society, people who people tend to take for granted. And it's it's just really stunning because you really think about life a lot of times within your bubble. And when you're exposed to what other people are going through, it really helps me. And I think everybody who understands it to really say, wow, okay, now how am I going to treat this person or this circumstance if I come upon this? Mm -hmm. So for example, after reading Nickel and Dimed, and that was many years ago, and this is even before we had, you know, our life change with what we're doing right now. Even as a nurse, I would always tip people very, very high. Right. After reading that book and I understood. Because in Nickel and Dimed, it talked about how there are people who work as waitresses um, in the food industry and how basically they really live off of the tips. It's not really based off of the salary, it's the tips. Right, but 
that's isn't that more of an American thing? Yeah, it's definitely just an right, American right. thing. Yeah, I heard that. I, I heard in different countries that if you tip, you're actually insulting, insulting? them. <laughs> right. I went when I went like to Italy. Man. They they're really not into tips. They, yeah, I know. But in fact, I gave a pretty large tip, and they were just like, "Oh no, no, no! This is too big." Yeah, I, they, I feel like you know, that's what shows. Well, that's where going back to made. That's the issue. The issue is that there are so many things that are are great about America, but there are so many things that we need to work on. We need to definitely. fix. And one mm-hmm. of them is why are people living off of just the tips? And and those tips are split too. Yeah. And and a lot of those places. But remember when we talked about a couple months ago, or was it last year? How you know how the tipping system even was even made? Yeah. Yeah. How was it made? Well, how was it made? Well, basically, it was like, I think it was in the 30s that it was established how African-Americans, because they were paid so poorly that they made the whole tipping system where they able to, you know, receive money only just by tips. Really? Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that that was, it started with, you know, African-American workers. Yeah, there's so many things that we don't really realize. Mm-hmm. and But it's definitely not um, minimum wage. And that's that. That is a problem. Well, it's less I than think, minimum wage. That's yeah, the it's thing. a lot less than minimum yeah. wage. And I and I just I think that there should be a minimum wage for waiters and waitresses and for people in the food industry. But right, going back to um, like even maid. Now there was a part where she was in the in the court. Remember that? And remember when the wording? Yeah, yeah it was switched? Like legal, 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 yeah. legal, legal. Oh, what yeah, did you guys I think to, about that? Explain that to our audience. What was going on? So basically, she was in court fighting for the custody of her daughter. And the thing is that she was not really experienced in court. So everything's going over her head, in ear, one ear, out the other. Because she represented herself too. She didn't even have a lawyer at she this point. She couldn't afford a lawyer, right. right? And it was kind of last minute too. They kind of just sprung it on her, so yeah. she couldn't even prepare herself. So basically, the scene went from you know, so have you been finding housing for her? to have you been legal legaling her legaling legal legal the legal did you legal the legal with her right stuff like that right. that and was the, hilarious i really the, i really like how they and did the that. other lawyer was going well my client is legally legal fully legally legal and this client over here is not legal at all like it was yeah. just like but when, and, when i thought about it was that okay they did so well with the beginning in terms of different editings like that but i just wish they had like some sort of continuation with that like you know finding different edits along the you know more yeah. stories because that was like yeah. in the first two three episodes but after that there was like it was just a clever way to capture your attention to capture your attention it was funny but it was just a clever way of basically showing court proceedings and how ridiculous it is you're not going to understand it even if basically even if they said what was actually going on behind the scenes with the legal jargon we would not have understood so they just basically said illegal legal legal yeah no, that's hilarious. true that's true we and wouldn't when, have understood even when she was going through her paperwork when yeah. she got it from the yeah from her um what do you call the person maybe her um, child care. what do you call what, it what, you say? what do you call it um, Adv- not advocate um this is the person her benefit worker her oh, yeah, the, yeah. the person she goes to that helps her with her benefits and she had this stack of papers and they were like finish it by tomorrow she's like how am i supposed to go through it and then she was going through it and you can see the titles of the papers change to you're not going to ever understand all this you're so <laughs> dumb and all sorts of stuff because she that's how people feel obviously when we see those stacks of paperwork right. and this let me tell you why that scene was very triggering for me because growing up Martha and I we were you know, middle class, you know, we both were in our homes. We just, mm-hmm. you know, I never really struggled. It was after I got married and we got married young that we started to really learn about, whoa, this is the real world. And it's and it was hard for many years because I was still going to school to get my degree, my college degree. <laughs> um, and I was having children at the same time. He was working, you know, just starting off as a pastor and we didn't have a lot of money at all. And the thing is, we, for a time when he was in the seminary, we were really struggling at first. In fact, we went into a bread line, remember? Yeah. No, it was like a circle. They said, okay, everybody, they got all the pastor's wives there and they were like, okay, everybody go into a circle and we're going to hand out this, these rolls. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. We're going to get bread. So, okay, I, you know, I stood there and everybody got bread and I was like, oh man, I'm going to need more than this. I got like, at the time, I don't think I had, no, I didn't even know I was, I don't even know if I knew if I was pregnant with Shasha at that you point. You were pregnant, but you just I didn't know. Yeah. Uh-huh. But I was like, I think I had like two pieces and I'm like, no, I'm going to need more. Like I have two kids at home. So I went back in the circle and there were, they did not like that. You were here already. You can't ha- you can't get another one. And I was like, oh, I didn't know it was like a well, one time rules. Oh, yeah. Snap. And they oh. went and they got so mad at me. And this was like my first foray into like that world. And I remember we started looking. We started looking for different pantries. Yep. 
to get more food, different places that would help out people. But yeah. no, but remember that, we went to that one and they gave you like a bag and they were like, whatever can fit in this bag, you can you, you can, can take. Have. So like we Mr. had to challenge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, like without the reward. That, that sounds yeah. like a Mr. Beast challenge. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that we were struggling this much. Well, because when we were at the seminary, I wasn't working yet. Or I, I think I might have just started to work as a yeah. cashier. And, and daddy wasn't even having his full um, salary. paycheck like salary. Small it was like portion. a stipend. And so we were really struggling. Plus, we were both in school at the time, at the but same that's, time. But that's when I found out that if you're a middle class person... Um, making above a certain amount, even if it's just slightly above a certain amount, there's no help for you. Right, right. Whoa. Like there are no services, there are no government mm-hmm. services, there's no community services. It's almost as though the only people that really have a lot of help are those that are severely below the poverty line or... Well, if you're wealthy, then it doesn't matter. Right. But at that point in time, we did get help because we were really down there because we we were were students. Yeah. And so someone said, Rita, why don't you just apply and get like food food stamps? And I was like, oh, okay. So that was the first time in our life. So I don't remember how we went down to, I guess, wherever that place. Well, yeah, we went down to the place where the workers benefits are, just like how unmade. And I went over there. They gave me the paperwork. I filled it out. And it seemed pretty easy. And by this time, I found out I was pregnant with Shasha. Actually, that makes it a whole lot easier because Once you start getting like yeah. SNAP, I think. Wick. Um, Wick. 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 You got Wick and some other stuff. So basically, Wick makes allows you to get discounts. Is it discounts or do they pay for it? I don't they remember now. I think basically, it was like formula, diapers. Ah. Is it even diapers? I don't know. It's basically stuff for childcare. Child is, 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 is it a sponsor? No, it's government. <laughs> it's government. Yeah, but like... You're acting like you're promoting it. No, because people should know. That's what I'm saying. That's what these podcasts are for now. So that families understand like what's available to them. Right, right. Because you said you, know, you didn't think about getting exactly, food stamps. Exactly, I didn't know no. about that. We had so never, we have had never WIC, qualified for anything like and that. Then, exactly, because I think actually what happened was I, I applied for WIC. And applying for WIC, somehow they also were able to now direct me now to get like the food stamps. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I got this card. It's called, called an EBT card. And I was like... And I think what was it? was it four hundred or six hundred a month? It was a good amount. I feel like if it was so like if it was four hundred, we were just super happy. And this was like four hundred or six hundred. And and I mean, yeah, I went. To, I remember going to the grocery store. I was just overwhelmed that I could actually buy food. Oh yeah, and it was just and like, not I, really be stressed about it because right. at that time I was buying for our neighbors. Right. I was buying for other people because I was just like, well, I have to share the wealth. To do that, we're not supposed to do it. it was, but I was like, we had to because we had money left over, and there were a lot of people who didn't qualify, who, did not qualify, who were struggling, who to help. bad. Right, they didn't have any food, and I remember we did that a few times, and every time the person would be crying in right. thankfulness because wow. they they didn't have the money. So there were a lot of people struggling, but okay, so now. I'm, you know, I have Shasha, a year is done. And now I'm like, okay, they're like, okay, you want to re-up it? And um, I was like, oh, what under, I wonder what other benefits there are. And so I went for just like, what do you call it? Just the benefits when you're not working, not uh, unemployment, because you have to be in, employed and then. I, I don't even know. Sure. So basically, okay. though, I went to do what what that woman on Maid does. Right, right. And then that was when I got a rude awakening, because I went to, I guess, the social worker who was working there. And she was like... You didn't fill this out right. And I was like, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And she goes, okay, well, you know, you have to report here tomorrow at eight. And I was like, report for what? What? She goes, well, you have to be here to look for a job and you have to like go on the computer there and you have to document all the, not the resumes, that job applications proving that you have spent all day looking for a job. And and it has to be like eight hours a day in order for you to be able "Mm." to go and get these benefits. But you can't do that as a young mother. I mean, I was in school. And in school. That is, that's literally impossible. It was was messed up. We weren't on it for long. No, no. After that, we were just like, I don't even think a year, to be honest. I don't remember. I think you went and got a job at like a yeah, local. I started. I went. No, I went and got. A, I was a cashier. Started as a cashier. Then I started as a aide. Wait, and then, nurses aide. Yeah, and you're saying that you actually did go at 8 a.m. and everything though. No, 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 no. We just I know. okay because you said that we weren't we weren't on it long, so I was assuming that that no, that no, we weren't on the no. food stamps, their EBT card. We weren't on right. That. Oh, we just okay, decided okay. to go a different route, but um, How but it's old? really difficult. It was oh. really difficult. We were in our twenties. We were, how, yeah, because she was twenty five when I when and made. I was wondering how old are you guys? You, were um, I was about twenty, Three? a little bit younger because I hadn't had Shasha. Twenty two, about twenty two. Oh, so oh, wow. So now, we were young. We were definitely young when we were struggling. That I mean, is so I remember. Right. I remember getting gas 
and literally pumping like two dollars gas because that's literally all i had so no, when i so in made it would show like yeah like the money and the show the money going down and it just was just i remember those days where it was just Yo, like i saw, walk pump, up when I like, saw her here's two dollars i saw her pump two dollars i was like that is that really gonna do anything no but when yeah. she went over the, the the gas like I pump started i started panicking for her i was like oh no right. no oh, man that's that's happened with us oh yeah that you has definitely that. happened it's been very place. frightening Hmm? When does the Maid series take place? Every, like now. It's modern. No, it's, it's modern. It's a modern. Yeah. It was a modern take. But I, I remember those days. These are these are tough times. If 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 I found five dollars in my pocket, I would celebrate. Party. It party would time. be just like party. Like I remember that. Oh my goodness, five dollars. Yeah, you know, it was really rough. Wait, what was that thing she did when she was going into each house and they slammed the door at her? What was she asking oh, for? Oh, the, the TBRA or something like that? The, the TBRA? Oh, see, I am not familiar with that, but I guess it's some sort of like government assistance so that people can afford rent. So then uh-huh. the paperwork, the landlord would have to fill out. That is, a lot of people don't necessarily like to do all these extra steps and they don't feel like they get, they don't get the, I would say the money from the government on time. Oh. And on top of that, they don't feel like they're going to get the right tenants when they right. the right type Ooh. of tenants okay so you guys think that the system has changed 20 years ago from now you know i think 20 systems? years ago it think was it's... a lot harder what, what? i still really? think it's hard i think it's hard but like for instance for instance when they got dollar stores like i'm talking about the real dollar store i'm talking about oh. dollar tree you know what i mean when you could get everything for one dollar that was huge walking in and being able to get like spaghetti for yeah but and... i think the government all the paperwork the red tape i think is even worse that's getting now worse now i think that's oh. even worse okay. but like like dollar stores, dollar stores now are like that. Really helps people. We never had dollar stores way back. Like speaking of dollar years. store, you saw on the news, mm-hmm. right? No, I didn't. What? They're raising their price. They already rose their prices. It's not going to be just a dollar now. Wow. Well, wow. a lot of them were like that. Like. Uh, not dollar, wasn't not it? Dollar, dollar tree. tree. No, no, dollar, dollar, dollar tree. tree. Dollar tree is raising the prices. Dollar tree is raising the prices. Wow. 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 What about Family Dollar? Family know. Dollar's always been, always had different. They've dollars. always had different prices. Yeah, Didn't so it's Dollar, dollar General. buy out, or is it Dollar General? One so of them bought out Family Dollar. Dollar right? General always was. I can't it was never a dollar store. Yeah, yeah. only oh. Dollar, dollar Tree was. Literally. Dollar Tree was literally a dollar. Everything First of all, dollar. do you guys remember? Dollar Tree Christmas. Yes. Yes. Someone tell okay. tell the audience what happened. Dollar Tree Barbies for Christmas. <laughs> Dollar Tree decorations. Dollar Tree food or Dollar Tree Christmas cookies. So I'm confused. Was everything in there a dollar or was did it, everything that you have was a dollar? Like no, no, no. no. Everything, everything in the, in the store, store cost one dollar. No matter right. what it was, it was okay, only so one dollar. If you had two things, it would be two dollars. Yes. Yes. Right. yes, yes, yes. Oh, oh, you th- you're saying that you could grab whatever you want and yes, then no, 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 one dollar. No, no. Oh my no. goodness, that's what I thought when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> guys, dollar store Christmas or Dollar Tree Christmas was great. They were I mean, fun. It was fun. It was just like go in there. The only thing is that, for example, we bought you guys like a Barbie house. Was and it the Hannah Montana one? No, 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 that's not a dollar. We basically too. had to shape it and nail it right. and put it together ourselves. It wasn't like, and it wasn't easy like Ikea either. It was yeah. a lot. I'm going to be honest. I don't remember Dollar Tree Christmas. I remember Nook Christmas and I remember Hannah Montana House Christmas. Oh. That's, those were good you guys days. Were like, we must young. have been balling at that days, point yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dollar Tree Christmases was, those were those were. I for remember real. Dollar Tree Christmas. Was okay. I even born? Yes. Yeah, you, you were born, baby. but you would you not have baby. remembered Dollar Tree. You know Christmas. why I know Dollar Tree Christmas? Because those would be the dolls where you can't even put shoes on them. They had beach feet. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait, they had that, wide that, beach feet. Like, like fat. Yes. You couldn't uh, put no shoes on them. <laughs> Oh, that's so oh, funny. Man. I don't know why. I remember every Christmas. I remember going to grandma and grandpa's house. I remember that Christmas. I remember pancake Christmas where we got, I think, IHOP or some sort of like cake or something like that. But that was the first time we didn't like. I think that you probably home. pushed out of your yeah, mind you, Dollar you, Tree Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you the know poverty what? years. But that's the thing. Like right now, that was poverty back then. But right now, like. I'm sure there's a lot of people here listening or watching where they've shop a dollar dollar, dollar tree. tree and right. that and that's fine. It's just, you know, yeah, that was it was a really I am grateful for stores like Dollar Tree and oh Dollar, goodness, yes. oh, yeah. dollar yes. General and Family Dollar. I am grateful because you can go in there, like you said, get good deals, mm-hmm. find find anything you need and and be affordable. And I think that we really, we went there for many, many, oh, many, many years. Yeah, I remember many shopping years. at Dollar Tree even more so than shopping at Walmart or Target. Like, yeah, Target, we were always yeah. I would always go to Dollar, Dollar Tree. Tree. Always. Dollar Tree was our Dollar, super that was my was, That was my go-to place to yeah. make sure that I'm making meals for you guys, making sure that we're all eating. Yeah. 
you know, I mean, oh my goodness, I I loved Dollar Tree. Yeah. I remember the you long know what really walk got over me? there. What what really got me was when I was watching Made, and she got this job, and when she got the job, she had to pay for all the supplies. She had to pay for yeah, her, that got me too. I was she like, had what? To pay for her uniform, that was and ridiculous. everything. Yeah. And it's just like, why are there so many opportunities that are not opportunities? Like they make you feel like it's an opportunity, but it's really not. No. Yeah, where you're giving more than you can get. Right. By the time you make it back up. You could be fired. You could be laid off. Right. Like, Look, it was a cut. Th- oh, this is kind of a spoiler, but it was cutthroat when the her and her boss like fired her because she took the other job. I, I mean, know. like I I felt really sad for her. Yeah, but then you, I also think about it from the boss's perspective because she's probably barely making ends meet, and yeah. so she can't have workers that could be undercutting her. So in this kind of position, you do feel for both. For example, right now I don't even know if it's expired or not yet, but we've had um, rent. Or is it a mortgage moratorium? That's right. Or eviction moratorium, I should That's say. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, we've had just we've had things on both ends where it was policies like, that are trying to help. Help, right? Help everybody make sure that they stay housed. But it's but, not but, but on the on the back end, the people who own the homes right. are left going like, and it's not even corporations. I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who decided to invest in real estate, right? Mm-hmm. And become you know entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs small and businesses. now they can't afford the mortgage to the bank. Well, the bank is not giving letting up. The bank is right. still knocking on their doors exactly mm. right. so i see i see both ends because we were that's a good segue to to this to this topic about the situation that we the country is in right now right it's in a very precarious situation right so actually so we had a handyman that came today to fix a couple of things and he told what did he tell you today hun? right so like in the industry right now you know people are not making phone calls to get things fixed right really so a lot of people are not and and part of that is because, you know, some people just don't want to get things fixed because they're scared of having someone in their home. So they're utilizing the services less. But not only that, but a lot of their workers either are not showing up or they are getting fired for not showing up or what? or now a turnaround of being laid off. So this is happening in every single industry. So in his field that he's in right now, there's people not showing up for work? There are some times that people are just not showing up for work. And part of that is that there's policies that are in place that is giving people like a check. And this is happening not just in... A you stimulus know, check, right? It's a stimulus check. And so this is happening. We had to hire some people in the medical field aides to take care of some family members that we have and we found the same thing with them they were complaining that people are not showing up we noticed that a lot of people were not showing up right we would have like a different nurse almost every week and it was like what's going on and the people the supervisors and bosses were like we are not being able to keep staff Right. Oh, same with our well, same with our junk people. We we know we have people right. to take our garbage and our and our boxes and stuff, and they're not even him. Wasn't he just telling you how? Yeah, he. Well, this is the owner. The owner is picking up some of the the trash. So he said that his son moved back oh. to work to work at. Um, actually, he graduated from college, right? Mm-hmm. And he worked and he came back to now work the garbage business with his dad. This is a junk business, not the garbage like on the curb. This is like if you have like a ton of extra yeah. boxes and things like that. And so he comes, they come, we call them pretty regularly to come and get like a bunch of our packages and things like that. Extra, extra garbage yeah. that and, cannot fit. And they used to be, they were supervising. Like I remember sometimes they would come, there'd be like five guys, six guys, seven Even guys. up to eight? Yeah. yeah. And now it's just, Several the, trucks. it's just the owner and his son. That's it. What? Right. Are you serious? And right. then our handyman today said that he was the, and this is what I was waiting for you to he, say. Yeah. He was the only. He was the only handyman that was working for the company for quite a few months now because so many people people are either not showing up so things are uh, and crumbling. also and also we um not to sound bougie but we were trying to hire a dri- a personal driver for us to drive us to uh to California cuz for our filming stuff but when we call they're saying there's a shortage of drivers too so every single industry went to go get some donuts one day and at the drive through <laughs> really? there were Krispy all King, remember yeah remember one yeah. we went yeah, through the drive through and there was remember. all the people that were there were new and they had to apologize and said these are all new staff because you know we didn't have we had a shortage of staff yeah. nobody knew how to make the donuts you nobody guys, knew how to, to do what, anything what is it going was, on it was in this chaos. country well you went to Burger King yesterday 
was it yesterday or the day before? And first of all, there's new hours that are posted and they were like, stay here at the first window and we'll tell you when you can move up to the next one. And we were waiting there for a good right. while. We're wondering like, what's going what's on? What's going on? I remember we had been there like a few times over the last several months mm-hmm. and it's, they were always talking about a shortage and I don't think it's gotten any better. Guys, right. what is going on in this country? Same. Why is there a shortage of everything? Right. Because- yeah, we're doing some renovation on our home. Shortage of Material. materials so yeah. our our home is not renovated we went to check out uh, some property to look at some property in the state that we live in and the people that were gonna like sell the property oh, yeah 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 they have a company where they would buy and sell luxury cars and they used to do very the well parts right or the like, whole car well the, oh, whole they, car. Yeah, the whole car right and they were saying that the inventory is down more than a hundred percent, where they've well, he was saying he would from, he would do about three hundred cars per month, and now they were down, down to twenty something what? cars that are, are are just available. Like the cars are not even available to, to to buy, and people are not buying the cars. So it's like literally every single industry is just crumbling. Do you think it's because of people becoming more uh, entrepreneurs on these days, or? No, Mm -mm. no, this goes far beyond that because for many years, we've had more and more and more entrepreneurs every year. This is a combination of COVID, people getting sick. Some of it is due to just government policies where individuals are receiving incentives um, or they're receiving paychecks because they're unable to get their paychecks. And then it turns around and now people don't have incentive to go to work. Well, because a lot of people were making minimum wage and it's really not minimum wage in this country really does not meet the needs of what people need to really survive on. So yeah, when they get the stimulus checks or the unemployment checks, things like that, and it's larger than they were making. Why would they go to work? Exactly. They're now going to turn around. They're now going to turn around and probably try to start their own business that they've been to. So a lot of the individuals, when they get these stimulus checks, it's not that they're lazy. I think some people want to paint it out that everybody's lazy, but they're not even making as much as some of these stimulus checks that are coming in. And so they take this money and they think, okay, this is my opportunity to now start my own business or start to like, you know, make t-shirts or do something that I can work for myself. Because let's be truthful, they're not treated well in these in these workplaces. You're, you're working at some of these restaurants or you're working at some of these places and you're treated like garbage. And so you're like, okay, this is my opportunity to change my life. Especially now that society seems to have gotten a lot more aggressive. So now you're really being treated mm-hmm. poorly right, right. by the, sometimes by your boss, sometimes right. by the customers. But you're, you're a bus driver and you know that it's more than likely that you're going to get COVID because you're driving a bus. You're going to say, I'm going to take this stimulus check and protect myself. Right. Yeah. Because I don't want to right. be constantly exposed exactly. to, to COVID. Exactly. But like you had mentioned earlier how in Made, how the, how the woman, the, char- the characters, remember how she had to buy her own products and things right. like that? That. Yeah. And so every month she has to now figure out, you know, whatever, how much you should take that out of her check, like cost of supplies. And it's not even like she's working for herself. She's limited for her hours as well. In the movie, they talked about she could only work 30 hours, no more. But also there's in the book, Nickel and Dime that I had mentioned earlier, they had a section on people who do cleaning. And what they didn't touch on in the series, which they could have, is the constant exposure to the chemicals. Mm. That is true. Actually causes health problems, which then causes more ER visits, more doctor's visits, more prescription that medication, so which then wow. now is, takes is money out of their pocket. So it's well, a they, vicious, vicious cycle. Well, I did. Well, remember the part where she threw up after cleaning that one bathroom inside that house? Yeah, but that was like she saw a dead rat. We're talking about like the chemicals. Yeah, exposure to bleach right. constantly. And yeah. Like smelling ah, it, you know, gotcha. that kind of thing. And, you know, respiratory issues and things like that. So and not just that, not just the cleaning supplies, but going into places like that that have that mold, mold right? or D- and yeah, dust and like, everything. You know, so when no. you see people saying, I'm not going to go back into work, this is no small decision that they're making. Some of them are making life and death decisions or sick or well decisions. Mm-hmm. And they're saying, I work there because I felt I had to. But now that I don't have to, I'm going to try and find a better way for my family. So I hate to say it, but I think everything's going to get worse before it gets better. Yeah. And what do we do? We already see the shortages in grocery stores. Well, we haven't what even talked do? about that yet. Like yeah. the grocery stores are, there is a shortage in grocery stores. Like I have seen a, this There's much- lack of 
produce that you're having. I know, like, I'm not even talking about like toilet paper, like how everyone was running on toilet paper. There is a shortage of food. There is a shortage of supplies. Do you think it's worse than when it was at 2020 and the at the height of COVID? Absolutely, absolutely. Because now we're having a short on gas. We're having a short on car parts. Like literally, everything is like blocked up at the ports, and some of them they're not even being produced because it's well, it's, it's a global backup. supply chain crisis. So mm-hmm. there, if if something is short in Taiwan, it'll affect us. Like they're, they're talking about for the microchips for the cars, it just goes all over. So, right. so where is this going? Is this is this going to be? Are we going to have food insecurities? Well, I definitely think we will. You know, there are companies right now for people who don't know where you can buy like MREs. But you know how it used to be just for people in the army. It's um, like, like dehydrated you- meals that you oh, just yeah, add yeah. water to and then boom, there's your mm-hmm. meal. And basically there are people or or if it's a cold thing, milk or something. Mm-hmm. But basically meal, they're meal replacements and you can buy it by the buckets and they stay good for like 30 40 years you know or 20 wow. years and so i remember we bought some um because we didn't know where this pandemic was going i bought mm-hmm. some a long time ago and so we have some so there are some companies right now though they are booming those people who are selling that they are making so much money right now because cool. people are afraid that not only where there'll be shortages but that they won't be able to afford food that's Whoa, another thing right, because of right. inflation and that's another thing we haven't talked about inflation. things are smaller but they're more expensive more expensive. Right, 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 right. You know, and Prices that's happening of a lot. Everything, milk, yeah. oil, everything. And then, of course, gas. A lot of people are really trying to get electric cars because. They're really scared they can about charge it. You can charge it how much gas. Gas is going to be ridiculous. Yeah. And when the price is, there's a place in California. I don't know what town, but there was a particular town in California. Right. It's in Monterey County. And like right $8. now the gas is like $8. A gallon. Yeah. That's, that is That's, incredible. Wow. wow. Right. So if if things get so bad, you know, um, people are probably not going to be able to travel. They're not going to be yeah. able to use their cars. Oh, man. It's just going to be a luxury well, we to use had, a car. Well, I would say we had a, a funeral recently in our family and even prices for airline tickets are super high. They're sky high right now. And so there are a lot of people who couldn't make it. And, and so it affects everything. So again, we have to wonder, and and before I even get to that, how does that make you guys feel? You know, because like right now, like we're talking like family to families, right? Yeah. And, you know, daddy and I have done a lot of talking, you know, as the adults. The thing is, those from in my generation and younger, like maybe those of you who are watching who are younger or like around the same age as me, I know that you guys are probably scared and worried because... It's something that none of us have ever experienced before. I think we've been through a lot of, I'm thinking like in the past 10 years, things have never been this bad. Like people always be joking online like, oh, you know, things are so bad right now, but you know what? It's, it's okay. They, they be, people make a lot of jokes and dark jokes or whatever. And now I feel like that we're in an actual serious time and I don't know how like mentally everybody's going to handle it. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I definitely agree with that. But I also um, think that a lot of people are going through this even prior to the pandemic. So I just feel like sure. that it's just... Mm, that's True. You know, it's just different people, different stages. You know, maybe some people are just new ex- at experiencing this more than those are being like, oh, yeah, I'm just used to this. Like, you know, maybe, right. you know, that's people. True. Because people that's have been point. going through this. Yeah, that's a good point. Right. Who do you think is going to fare better? I mean, because individuals that have been going through struggles. I, I remember when we were going through struggles, we just learned about a thousand ways to make potatoes. Or, you know, we found those shops where you can get spaghetti for a dollar. And making dollar meals, meals that literally yeah. can feed the entire family for less than five dollars. And so we just learned how I remember when we were going through the worst of our times, we learned that maybe it's not the best idea to go and get some fast food for five dollars, but maybe feed the family for five dollars. Right. It's just, you know, these are the kind of decisions that we just had to make. Right. So basically, if you're already in the mindset of hustling or making, you know, a dollar stretch, you'll be left better off right right now. What do you think, Shasha? Man, just oh, man, this is just a lot. You and you feel? must be feeling really overwhelmed. Do you feel overwhelmed? I mean, sort of like when you hear all the stuff in the industry. It's more like, what can you do? You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm-hmm. How about you, Shiloh? I'm not really overwhelmed at all because... I mean, I feel like I'm too young to really worry about those stuff. I mean, sure, I, I entered high school and everything, but, like, I'm talking, like, 12 to, like, 
16, maybe. You shouldn't really worry about the stuff that much, about the, you know, the industry and everything, because... Well, here's the thing. A lot of people your age are, you know, trying to help the family out. Right, you know, they're trying, trying to help to support. Take, exactly, mm-hmm. like, take care of their younger siblings, you know, work and stuff. Yeah, the thing is that you're in a very different spot than 99% of people in the country, you know? 98.98, whatever. Mm-hmm. Over 90% of, of people your age you're in a very different spot so i understand that you're not really feeling yeah. overwhelmed uh, cause but uh, there's a lot of people out there who feel like that they have to do their right. part to support their family and mm. stuff so. i'm seeing i'm seeing a lot of job openings i remember like one of the first jobs that i had to help out my family when we were going because i didn't grow up privileged i grew up you know having to work and i remember one of my first jobs was working at a burger joint and just making enough money not necessarily to help my parents provide but my needs I was able to make a little additional money so that I can meet my needs and and prepare for, you know, things that I had to get done. So I just think that at this point in time, I'm hearing a lot of people being pretty judgmental. They're saying, oh, this generation is lazy or this generation doesn't know how to work or this generation, you know, is entitled. I I don't think that that's fair. I think I think generations just keep on doing that. They just always. Well, I think those the people who say that, in my opinion, are people who don't understand the work that this generation is doing now. Right. because being on social media or starting an online business is no walk in the park. No, it's, it's not. hard. Yeah. And it takes a lot of work. And so if people aren't going and get, let's say getting a fast food job or doing the, the other stuff that people are used to seeing, they automatically think, oh, what are you doing? Just making a video or taking a picture. And it's like, they it's a whole the, lot yeah, more behind it. They do not know the behind the scenes. Right. Yeah, it takes right. work. I mean, you guys are hard workers. Like, I don't, I wouldn't say that you guys are. I think that you have privilege, but your privilege was not given to you. You mm-hmm. guys actually worked really hard and consistent for it. And, and there's so many kids in this generation, I believe, that are doing their part. They're oh, working yeah. hard. They're doing their part. They're figuring out how they're going to make moves next. And, you know, I, I actually don't feel that pessimistic about this generation. I actually feel optimistic about this generation. Well, you know, again, what can we do to prepare for it possibly getting worse? Before it gets better. Well, I agree with what the kids said. First, you got to get your mentality right. You got to be prepared mentally to know that things are going to change right now. And it's not going to be forever, but it is going to be for a time. And so you got to get your mind right to say, okay, I am going to make sure that I understand it's not going to be the same. So step number one, mentality. Get mentality What would you say step number two is though? Step number two. Make a plan. Okay. Make a plan. Make a plan. So what would that plan look like? What would the plan look like? Stock up. Wait, now when you say that, people say, oh, don't tell people to make a run and go and and then now we're going to have toilet paper shortages. Well, how are you going to get stuff if you don't stock up? (laughs) (laughs) That's a good point. It's true. Right. I I, I do think I do think that each individual and each family needs to make an individual plan. And part of that plan is going to be how are we going to make sure that we have some additional resources. And it's not just food buying out food and stuff at the market. But it's like like rationing and stuff. It's it's planning out rationing. But it's also buying like the is it called MREs or yeah. Also buying things like that. Like that's not necessarily going to sell out. Right. 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 Absolutely. And I just think that um, just making sure that you probably um, are like, for instance, one of the things that we got is we got these planters mm-hmm. where you can actually plant vegetables, vegetables and fruit and different right. things like that. And so that was one of our plants right. that we were going to have Start to ensure that we are eating fresh food still, because if we get cans Cans have a lot of sodium and you don't want to always be depending on canned foods. Um, You want to make sure that you're getting fresh food and things like that. So, yeah. Right. I would say another thing, too, is like like Shasha said, I was just teasing her with the stock up. She's absolutely right. You do need to stock up. You do need to be prepared. And if you do it more gradually, then there won't be like a shortage. Like if you wait to the last minute and then buy like 10 packs of toilet paper, that's a problem. But I also think you you should do your study like you should study what other people have done in the past to see how they, you know, how how they stock up, how they, you know, how how to buy certain things. Because, you know, like, you Mm -hmm. know, how to like manage your Money. Buy, right? Yeah, what to buy? What to with buy? Your money. 
and mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. just study the ways of how people are doing it even in 2008 because i feel like that we, we always forget about that year or not forget but like You're it's right. always yeah. something that it's just like exactly right and that's that's a good point though that you made earlier about people who already were feeling this way mm-hmm. but prior to the pandemic because in 2008 even though there was a recession I didn't feel any different for me. Really? Right, but it was, I was already people, struggling. It, wait, how come it didn't affect you? We were already, I was already struggling. We were already struggling. Exactly. <laughs> right, that's we why there's like, like, a lot of people right now who we're are losing like, our oh, house. We're losing. We're already struggling. It's not going to get much like, worse, you know. <laughs> like they're, they're already used to it. They know what right. to do. They know they they have their plan. They have their system. Yeah, I yeah. Do, but I definitely do think that this year is probably worse than 2008. I just feel like that is just a little mm-hmm. yeah. slightly different. I would say also just probably I, an, another step I think would be start trying to get used to like a more simpler life. Oh, yes. Yeah. Like we are so used to eating what we want when we want, especially here in the U.S. and shopping and when shopping you want. and all that stuff. And I think we need to get used to a more simpler life, meaning you might have rice and beans every every night for a while. Or you might have more spaghetti or you might have to wear the same clothes. It's fine. I have to admit, I actually was struggling with that. Not ordering Amazon packages and not, you know, doing whatever you want in terms of like, you know, going out and right. eating and just like, I feel like for, for someone who's privileged as me, I feel like that was my struggle. I think another great idea, and we have done this before and we even alluded to it, is helping others. Right. If you have some, share it with somebody else. Just like how we were saying, like when we got our card, we made sure that our neighbors were eating too. Sharing with others is what's going to get us all through this. So yeah, sharing with others becomes really important. And I, I'm a big believer in in communities coming together because you know somebody may have one thing with which was food. Another person may be a mechanic, and they can you know help someone fix their car. We're really gonna have to like bring back the barter system to mm. sort of you know help one another in our communities. Right, and I think what you were saying about helping others helping others with your knowledge like for example if you are someone that knows how to garden helping your neighbor right if you are someone who knows how to fix cars helping you know someone else because i think there's a lot of knowledge that could help you save money if we kind of pulled our knowledge together yeah, not just definitely. our resources right and so that we don't have to be dependent on spending money every time now that being said there are people who are going to be needing work so there are people like, for example, our handyman that we use, he has been a friend of the family now for years. Mm-hmm. And and so I'm not saying like I'm going to go like take his job or anything like that. But, you know, he has a lot of knowledge. So he might be able to if he wanted to like pass, help on, his, information. pass on information mm-hmm. and help others. So it's a really it's a balancing act. You know, you want people to still be able to work. But then also there's just times where you just don't have the money and you need something done you know, fixed Mm -hmm. or food or something like that. And at the end of the day, I think that it's important to have your faith. It's important to believe that better is yet to come. You know, this is not doomsday situation where we'll never come back. We'll never be able to spring back from this. We truly believe that things are going to get better soon. One day it's going to get better. And what you want to do is you want to Be the right type of person. Make sure that you have the right type of heart where you're helping others, loving others, being kind, being considerate, because, you know, we're going to get through this, but we're going to get through this being good people. Yeah. Amen. Right. Right. So I'd like to share a story uh, with our audience, um, sort of like a closing thought. Okay. Okay. And um, it's all about your attitude. It's about your attitude because we have to have the right attitude as we're going into these times. So when me and Rita first met and after we had decided that we were going to get married and we were preparing for our wedding, we went to our a person that would make us a cake. It was actually in the South where we got married. Mm-hmm. And this particular lady um, invited us over to the home and she had like a whole bunch of cakes, like sample cakes spread out for us. And we tasted each one of these sample cakes and we were like, okay, we want this one. And I think what we decided to go with a rum cake, right? Yes. But it wasn't the rum cake that I am accustomed to. Yeah, it was better. Ah, <laughs> uh, That's what she thinks. Uh, but no, this was it not was good. good. It was See, good. There's a Jamaican rum cake that is called black cake. No. Where it's 
thick, saturated. It's like no, a, it's not good. It's it's delicious. It's not good at all. And then it has this like white icing with like these little. It tastes balls. like fruit cake with alcohol in it. Ew. It's it's just no. divine. So I thought when she said rum cake, I thought I was gonna get that. No, we got the good rum cake, the one that's. Yeah. I don't even know how to describe the it. It's like it's white regular cake, cake with the rum flavor, and it's right. so good. It was so moist, and it was so good. What Anyhow, rum? it was rum flavor. Rum flavored. Was it, it actual rum? It's rum flavored. It's not. It, it doesn't have the alcohol content. Was it actual rum when you guys were together before I was born? <laughs> yes, it was rum that had a flavor. <laughs> what does that a, even mean? It was a rum. You must no, 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 no. Was, was the, were we drinkers? <laughs> we're not drinkers. <laughs> no. Didn't get drunk off your wedding. We didn't cake. get drunk off of it. It bakes get, out. You can't get it's drunk a rum. off the rum cake. You know what it was like? It's like the rum cake we get on the we used to get when we re- cruised. Because that's what I was saying. Because I didn't want you guys to think that I was talking about the, the rum cake we had. Like, did you actually have? No, rum no, we had that cake. same sort of rum cake. What's yeah. the rum cake we usually get on the cruise? It's like Portuga. Yes. Portuga, oh yeah. my yeah. god, guys! It's I like that. that. It's like that, that kind of oh, rum. So y'all, good. if I was there, I would just reject both your cakes. I do not like rum. Yeah, oh well, yeah, you you would reject. You one. like the rum cake we get no, from on cruises, don't we? You don't like the you don't eat it. I don't like any of it. Jamaican black rum. No, no, and never nobody likes that. Nobody likes that. Never like that. Every time the church would serve, and I know I probably offended every single Jamaican out there. I'm just kidding. She's Jamaican. She's Jamaican. Right, right. <laughs> my grandmother, my grandmother's father is Jamaican. So guess what? She only right. found out. Like, the, great, she only found great. this out this year. So <laughs> anyhow, she grew up thinking. Here. Anyway, <laughs> that's like calling the dad I- Irish. Like, like he is. His grandfather's Irish. Okay, but I really want to tell my story. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, when we were eating the cake, she was giving us a story. And she was telling us a story about how she gathered all of these things together, all of these ingredients together to make the cake the day before. And she's talking about how she was so stressed out because she knew that she had to have all the materials to bake for us and all sorts of stuff. So she was really stressed out. And so she was telling the story of why she's so tired now. So what happened was the day before, she was at the grocery store. She drove there. She went in, got all the materials, bought them, and came out and found out that her car was stolen. <gasps> right. So so she's sitting there panicking, and she's oh, looking wait. in the parking lot, and she's just <laughs> looking everywhere, looking everywhere. It's like, where is my car? Oh, my goodness. I don't know where my car is. Oh, I already I, I'm behind on making all these cakes. I got people coming. I can't believe this. And then she calls the cops and she's like, listen, someone stole my car. They took a report. And when they took the report, she said, oh, it, you know, it was a Honda Civic. And they were just no, like, it was like a van. It was a van. No, it was a car. It was a car that was. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. It, it was, was like a, a Honda Civic yeah, or yeah, something yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so she was just like this Honda Civic, and they were like, "Oh yeah, that that car goes missing a lot. Like, there's a lot of people that are breaking in those Why cars." So I understand. Hondas? Why do people want Hondas? It was back in the it was back in the '90s, and Hondas were like it really was it. That was, was it. Were it. That right. was like our first cars. Wow, Honda Civic. All we have was Hondas. Right, like yeah. Honda was it. We love Honda. So so they took the report, and she was sitting on the curb, and then the cops, after they took her report and everything, the cops were like, would you like us to drop you home? And she said, no, it's okay. I'll just have my daughter come and pick me up. So she calls her daughter, and she's just like, um, ma, you know, honey, could you come and pick me up, you know, because, you know, someone stole our car. And she's like, mom, you didn't drive the car. You drove the van. And... Oh! Right beside her, right right beside her, where she was sitting was her van. She literally was beside her van the entire time (laughs) writing a report about a car that was stolen that was not stolen. It was sitting at home. I remember you telling this story. And I was just like, it just goes to show you that your mentality, your mind can play tricks on you. If you wake up and you're like, this is the worst thing or I'm going through the worst time, you know, you're already setting yourself up for failure. You can be having a tough time, but it's your perspective, your mind, how you choose to look at it can begin to shape your day. Mm -hmm. So because she thought she had a bad day, her day went from bad to worse. Mm -hmm. But if she had the right mentality about the challenges that she had to face, she might have had the clarity of thought to, to remember, oh, you know what? I got my van. She wouldn't have had to go through all that stuff with a police officer. So Mm -hmm. I just want to share that with you guys because we just want to encourage you to have the right mentality no matter what you're facing. You know, 
um, have that optimistic, faithful perspective that, you know what, things are not the best or things may not be the best, but it's going to work out. Right. It's going to work out right. for us. And we're going to make a plan. We are going to have a great attitude about this. Right. And we are going to survive this thing. Together. And, and we're going to do it together. And we're going to do it as a community. And we're going to help others. And when you come with the right mentality and the right attitude, your day won't go from bad to worse. Your day will go from pretty challenging time. <laughs> Two brighter days. Because remember, your car is always right next to you on the curb. <laughs> exactly. So um, that's that's my story. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We really enjoyed our time. We hope you did, too. Here on Onyx Family, we love to tell the story, feed the soul, make you laugh, heal the heart. Join us once again on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, um, YouTube, anywhere where you listen to podcasts. Right. Or, or you can watch us here on our channel. All right, guys. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.